This, this is for Knicks fans. It's a glass half empty, but hold on. I think this is more like it. I'll just leave one little drop. See, there's a little drop on the bottom. It's a glass almost entirely empty. That's for you. And then also, I know it, 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 the, the, the big free agent signing, I wanted to be the first one to get you a Julius Randle jer jersey. I hope you rock it. You rock it with pride. <laughs> Stephen A. Smith says Max Kellerman doesn't have credibility because he wasn't an athlete and he's not a journalist. We'll see about that. What are you talking about? The fact of the matter is you know I'm, you I'm walked into facts. a game against the Utah Jazz. Hold on, Max. We we let you speak and you ain't the basketball guy. And we let you do most of the talking. We let Paul you speak Malone too. and John Stockton was the, the uh, was the offense. I just finished telling you when it come to boxing, I lay off. Did I not? I did say that. In other words, what I'm saying That's is I you, understand bro. that you're you say level of Every time you open your mouth about basketball, it's clear this ain't your expertise. You don't know what the hell you're talking about. Then how the come offense right between so John Stockton and Carl Malone, the, the offense between those two, that's what their offense was predicated on. Isaiah Thomas had okay. everybody. It, it wasn't about them offensively. Thank it was you, Isaiah Thomas's offense. It was Stockton to Malone in Utah. Isaiah Thomas was surrounded by a bunch of defenders hustle guys, rough riders, and what have you. He was the face of that franchise and the face of their offense. He was their number one option. There has never been a game, let alone a season, where John Stockton was the number one option. It's ridiculous. It's yes, ridiculous. Don't even make no sense. You are giving the evidence. You are giving the evidence for Isaiah Thomas, which I subscribe to. Ultimately, I got him by a hair. He was also by a, a finals hair. MVP and by they won two finals. By a hair. However, by a hair. you guys are acting like Stockton's not in the conversation. Why was it Stockton made five All NBA first teams defensively, We're averaging three steals a game? Was that also Carl Malone? He was shooting, by the way, Stockton could shoot the Hold lights up. out. Stop, That's stop, also stop, stop, stop. I'm answering. Let me answer. Taking, let me answer. Let me answer. Nobody's taking let me away answer. from how great one John Stockton elite, was defensively. One of the elite, one of the elite steals players, one of the elite steals players in the NBA was Allen Iverson. Allen Iverson will be the first to tell you he couldn't guard anybody. He had to take chances stealing the ball. Steals are not the act that you know the perfect implication yeah. of what you do with your sure. defensive prowess. But he also is. won five it defensive is first teams. He was on the all, all defensive first team five. But times. we didn't say he could have played defense. The steals leader. We couldn't do. We didn't say he could have played defense. So we talking, what we're saying we, is we Isaiah about, Thomas. So. Isaiah Thomas was an elite defender as well, and by a mile, he was a better offensive player. Even when they agree, Stephen A. Smith is so disrespectful to Max Kellerman. He even got Jay Williams in on this one. There's nothing wrong with Max's point. Stephen A looked foolish on this debate. First he tries discrediting John Stockton's assist by making an irrelevant point about Allen Iverson. John Stockton's team was not constructed the same as Allen Iverson's. And when Max brings up the five-time all-defense, Stephen A changes the argument yet again. Both John Stockton and Isaiah Thomas deserve to be on the dream team. And pointing that out doesn't mean you don't know basketball. I'm only speaking about recreational use of marijuana. I think it's abhorrent. I think it's ridiculous. And I don't support it at all in terms of the NBA legalizing it. I don't believe that a paying customer should take money out of their hard-earned take hard-earned money out of their pockets to patronize an NBA product, to walk to a game and see some dudes walking up courtside. Ha! I don't believe that. Hell no. It is Hold if on. people can't if people can't be disciplined enough to refrain from it, that's their problem. I don't want to see that. Hold on. I don't. This is not about showing up to the game high. No one is saying the players should be high when they play. That's Duh. not what I'm Whoever saying either. Whoever even said that. I'm saying they because will. Because they will. They'd have the be right to. Because there are examples of players who've shown up high, that's a reason to outlaw recreational use on someone's own time. It's absurd on its face. You can't show up high. But after the game, what you go off and do is your business, particularly a league that is in bed with companies that peddle alcoholic beverages, it is a Absurd if that's the standard that especially once marijuana is legalized to set if the bar is alcohol Marijuana passes that threshold according to every study ever done. So well, uh, the fact study that study studies 
Study, study, well, study. I mean, when, have well, you been, have you been, have, have, have you, have you been inside a locker room? Have you been courtside and seen some of these dudes? I'm yes. telling you right now, Max. Yes. Here's what I'm telling you. Well, whatever. If you can do it recreationally without any repercussions, they will show up to the game that way. The prohibition against marijuana is based almost exclusively on a government propaganda campaign oh, that was stop it, you with this nonsense. That, that, it was, government it propaganda. Was, I'm talking right. reality. Harry, I'm talking about I'm, dudes showing up to I the game. No, 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 no. Max, I've seen it. I am it. talking reality. Max, finish I your thought, then we're going to take a your... quick break and get back to it. Yeah, they, but please, why even bother I, listening? I, now, right now, Molly? Pro yeah. Yeah. Go, let's been... go to break. Let's okay. go to break. Go okay. ahead. This one's just embarrassing. I don't even know where to begin. Common sense will tell you that drugs and alcohol affect everyone differently. Kevin Durant said his best season, he was getting high before every game. The rule has never stopped players from using it. All it does is hand out unnecessary suspensions. The players barely play the way it is. Why would you want another reason for them to sit out games? If they are so high that they're visibly compromised, then they should be punished. Same thing with alcohol. But if there's no impact on their performance, then who cares? The fact that David Stern, as strict as he is, was telling them to get rid of the rule just shows how pointless it is. Who's a more unstoppable, forget about scoring, forget about natural, forget about who it's easy for, who's a more unstoppable offensive player? It's a five-on-five -five game. LeBron James or Kevin Durant? Kevin Durant. Incorrect. Kevin Durant. LeBron James Kevin Durant. is a what are you watching? far more unstoppable what are, what are you watching? offensive far player. More on far, far more, more unstoppable. That's far a joke. More. That's a joke. Offensive it, player. I, I, excuse me, I didn't stutter. Not just shooting. I didn't stutter. Not just scoring. I didn't say you didn't ask me about a jab or a body shot. You asked me about a jump shot. <laughs> you asked me about basketball. No. Oh, Let me tell you something right now. Let me tell you something right now. Kevin Durant is 6'11". Who can pull up from 40? Okay. This brother is on that level. I'm talking about offensively. Now, Kevin, now, Kevin, if you want to tell me that LeBron James, out. from a physical, he's big and he's unstoppable because no, no, he can get to the no, basket no, no, anytime he wants to. Skill, yeah, Kevin six, Durant. 6'11 six, six, and so he you, can so shoot you're, from you're three. A, you're asking me, you're, ask, you're acting like Kevin Durant ain't even in the conversation. LeBron doesn't have the offensive skills that Kevin Durant has. Uh, offense, incorrect. Kevin Durant doesn't have the what? offensive skills LeBron has. Oh, my you're God. You're taking offense oh to mean God. scoring. Okay. Offense is much more scoring. Now, okay. Carl Malone was unstoppable going to the basket. What right. was he, about 260? Right. That's what We're LeBron time, is, guys. but he passes like right. Magic right. Johnson, right. and he can shoot right. from right. outside. Well, it's ignorant. Okay. I'm not even talking to you but about Stephen it no more. A, to your, I'm not even talking to you to about it no more. To your earlier criticism for joining like a super Magic team, and move shoot. on. When it comes to one-on-one -on -one scoring or shooting, no one is denying that Kevin Durant is much better than LeBron James. But Max Kellerman said offensive player, and he's talking about the five-on-five -five game. LeBron averages way more assists while averaging the same amount of points for his career. No matter where KD has been, he's always had Hall of Fame teammates, whereas LeBron spent his first seven years by himself in Cleveland. Yet LeBron still manages to win more. There's no question KD can take over a game, but when he's not scoring, he becomes a liability. We saw that against Boston in the playoffs and when he blew a 3-1 lead to the Warriors, the same team that LeBron beat. LeBron is also more efficient than KD because he takes higher percentage shots getting to the basket and using his physical advantage. This really isn't a debate. All KD does better than LeBron is shoot and score, but when it's a team game, LeBron is much better. He puts up better numbers and he wins more. That's the end of the discussion. This last one really got Stephen A up in arms. Max owned Stephen A and he didn't even say anything. I'm talking about the Mike Wilbons, the James Browns, and everybody in between. Black folks all over the country, all in the media, everybody speaking up on behalf of Colin Kaepernick. Right. But Colin Kaepernick, you the one person that don't have anything to say. You step aside while brothers and sisters who know that you were right, all of us are fighting on behalf of you. But right. you are the one that won't speak up for yourself. It's transparency, Stephen A. And that's like, the, like I've done it. I've had incidents throughout, throughout the course of my career. And then there have been times where I've, try, I've gone into interviews where I've done an hour and a half, two hours of an interview. And then they break down and they edit. And then you guys get on, uh, get on the show and there's a panel of people. And then they break down whatever clips that they show. They're mm -hmm. not showing the entire hour and a half or two hours of that, 
of that interview that I've done. So what he wanted was transparency for people to see the full workout, to see the full Colin Kaepernick. Again, you, you mentioned obviously Max is going to get in here. And like I said, I'm in the streets. Max almost seems blacker than you, Stephen A. <laughs> with 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 what time he out. with with he's coming out. you know with this commentary. Tom, with all due respect, my brother. You <laughs> I'm just you, saying, you, dog. Tom, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm, I'm just I'm saying. A, I'm gonna check you right now. You don't cross. I'm the line. just saying. Tom, Tom, Tom. Wait a minute. You don't cross the line. <laughs> First of all, like I said, you, Colin Kaepernick, <laughs> Eric Reed, any of y'all that want to debate me in front of black people and talk about what's best for black people, name the time and place, I'll show up. I don't want to hear, what's the definition of blackness? Is there a definitive definition of blackness? You ain't the only, you ain't the only brother out there that's in the streets. I'm in the streets no, every day. I, I, when it comes to Stephen A and Max, I've been seeing a lot of confusion in the comments. No one is saying that Stephen A is wrong for trying something new on first take. If Stephen A felt like him and Max weren't a good pair, that's perfectly fine. But Stephen A has gone too far. He questioned Max's credibility. He said he wasn't an athlete and he wasn't a journalist. Why should we listen to him? He completely blamed Max Kellerman for the ratings on first take. He's taken countless personal shots at Max while Max Kellerman was only fair to Stephen A. You can even see from these clips, Stephen A doesn't respect Max. Whenever he doesn't have a point, he personally attacks Max and questions his knowledge about sports. There's no reason to badmouth your former co-host after he gets fired from ESPN. And that's why sports fans have started to have a problem with Stephen A. Smith. But that's all I have for this video. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. Don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed this video and subscribe for more content just like this. And I will see you in the next upload.